Well, happening now at 501, some state legislators here in New Mexico say what is happening with behavioral or mental health providers and their patients is so bad, the state legislature needs to call itself into session to do something about it. As you may know, the state froze payments to 15 of New Mexico's largest mental health providers after an audit showed some signs of fraud, but the providers say they still don't know what exactly they're accused of. And critics say by having a company from Arizona take over the providers, that's left New Mexico's shaky mental health care system even more vulnerable. Some Democrats are now trying to drum up support for an extraordinary session of the state legislature, something that has only happened once ever before. The goal with it would be to pass a bill to restore funding to the nonprofits until they have a chance to answer the findings of the audit. There's urgency here. If we wait until January, it's too late for a lot of these folks. It is going to take bipartisan support to pull this off. At least five GOP members of the House and one from the Senate would have to join every Democrat to agree to the emergency special session for this to happen and even more to override any veto of a bill if it were to get passed. Governor Martinez has defended her administration's actions, saying they were necessary to avoid corruption. Now, if you talk to the HSD, the Human Services Department, it tells you that it had to go out of state for the audit because if it had a company from in-state do it, it would be a major conflict of interest. Well, developing now, tonight is your chance to give your two cents on Albuquerque's police department because the task force that is supposed to oversee the group that's supposed to police the police department is meeting for the very first time. It's at the North Valley Senior Center in Northeast Albuquerque, and that's where Samantha McDonald is right now. So tell us about this meeting, Sam. Well, Matt, the public is highly encouraged to join in on the meeting tonight to figure out how to improve the relationship between the public and the police. So from 5.30 to 7 tonight, you can join the 11 members who have been appointed to the, to the Police Oversight Task Force. The plan of action is to better understand the current over oversight process, identify problems, and discuss how to make Albuquerque safer and more secure. I spoke to the chair of the committee who says there have been tensions between the community and the police, and the openness of the forum could be key to solving problems. The safety of our city and our citizens is really dependent on uh, a good relationship between the general public and the police force. And unfortunately, that has broken down in recent years. The committee has scheduled a total of four public forums, including possibly one virtual forum. Matt, back to you. All right, thank you for the heads up on this meeting, Sam. A lot of people are very interested in this. Now, if you missed the forums, no worries. You can watch them all online afterward. Five of four now. Five candidates are now vying to be the next police chief for Los Alamos. Los Alamos Monitor reports final interviews will begin later this month. The field was narrowed to five candidates through questions about their background as well as a detailed review of all the materials they were asked to submit. Back in June, Los Alamos' police chief, Wayne Torpy, announced he was retiring after he had a stroke. Of course, the big national and international story this morning continues to be a possible military action against Syria. President Obama is going to spend much of today meeting with leaders of the House and Senate Armed Services, Foreign Relations and Intelligence Committees, rallying support for his plan to wage limited airstrikes against Syria. For that country, suspected use of chemical weapons against its own people, the U.S. and pretty much the U.N. and a lot of European countries say Syria did do this. The president is calling on his 2008 opponent, Senator John McCain to help save him while his own party is not on board with this strike idea. I'm saying that the president, I think, made, uh, made sense in a lot of things he had to say, but we're a long way from, from achieving what I think would be a most effective strategy. We want there to be some consequences. What is that? Is that just going to war? Is that bombing? Uh, is that killing more people? So right now, I'm, right. not, I, I'm not yeah. there yeah. yet. We urge the president to up his game and inform the American people, what does it mean if a side wins and the opposition loses? Well, this afternoon, the Secretary of State, Defense Secretary, and Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff will testify before the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. We'll have more on Syria coming up in the next half hour. We'll also have more coming up on CBS this morning at 7 o'clock. Now, as Congress also wrestles, wrestles with immigration legislation, a key question is whether the 11 million immigrants already in the United States illegally 
should get a path to citizenship. Now, some Republicans in the House say yes, so long as it's not the special path advocated by Democrats and passed by the Senate. They say people who crossed the border illegally or overstayed their visas should not be rewarded with a tailor-made solution when millions are trying to go through the legal channels that often takes years and thousands of dollars. Right now, it's unclear what a path to citizenship that is not a special pass might look like or how many people it could help out. All right, 506, back home in New Mexico, something is rotten in Ruidoso. Folks down in the scenic town say uh, someone's septic tank has been leaking for almost a year. And this stuff, raw sewage, ugh, is running down the streets and into yards. That is disgusting. One man took his concerns to the village's managers two months ago, hoping they would finally hook the neighborhood onto the village's sewer lines. But he says nothing has happened. I got a problem. Nobody wants to listen. We're the little man. We're not the big contractor. We're not the big developer. We're shoved aside. Mr. McMath there says the village told him it will look into fixing the problem. That's if the folks who own the homes don't take action first. The village was closed yesterday for the holiday, so we have not heard back from the managers there. Well, some local firefighters got a free lunch, truly a free lunch on Labor Day, all courtesy of the Olive Garden. To thank them for their hard work, the Olive Garden and the Northeast Heights fed Albuquerque firefighters from Station 15 who are on the clock. They tell us they're quite grateful for Olive Garden support. They say it's something they see often from people that they serve in that area. They go out of their way to, uh, to give us uh, things like this, and it, it's really nice. It makes us feel appreciated, and we're, we're, like I said, really grateful. This was the 12th year that Olive Garden delivered lunches on Labor Day in communities all across the country. Firefighters weren't the only ones who got it. Police officers did, and so did emergency room workers. We thank them for working on the holidays and every day to help keep us safe. All right.